super job by our pitching staff. Obviously, you know, we, uh, it was both teams striking each other out. I think we struck them out 13 times. And I think they struck us out 13 times. Uh, we only walked them once. Um, but uh, it was just a, it was just a tough night to hit. Pitching was good. Um, good. And, uh, you know, I thought, I thought Patrick Wicklander came out and, and, and did a really good job. I, I think he would probably tell you he didn't have the command that, he, that he's had, but he still was really, he was really good. It was hard to hit. And uh, Monk came in and fell behind 3-1 against the lefty. Uh, we were just trying to get through that inning. Uh, I went breaking ball, breaking ball, and got a strikeout. And uh, then Kevin, and I think Kevin would probably tell you that, you know, he didn't have his best stuff by far. Uh, and it was it was just good enough, but uh, good rally there in the eighth to kind of give us a little bit of a cushion. Uh, but I feel real fortunate that uh, that we won the ball game. Honestly, I thought uh, you know Sullivan pitched an outstanding game for them. Hutch, Dave, you kind of touched on it there with Cops, but he almost looked human there at the beginning of his outing. What did you see in those first few at bats, and how was he able to kind of settle it down after that? Uh, he's leaving some pitches up and. Uh, you know, he, he, you know, they, they tried to, they tried to get on him quick. They, they started out and they took a couple pitches. They realized he was going to throw strikes, and then, and they started swinging. Um, but uh, just, just didn't really command the ball like he had had, you know, maybe as much. But he had some, he had some really good, you know, pitches as well, where he, he got through some hitters pretty quick. But give Georgia credit, they, they battled and they fought us. And uh, you know, again, they're, they're one hit here and there away from. Tying us, taking the lead a couple of times as we were, you know, one or two hits away from, from blowing it open. We couldn't get it until finally Robert, you know, fought off the pitch and just kind of slung it into center field. And he threw 54 pitches tonight. I mean, do you think he'd be available again tomorrow or Sunday? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he could go again. Matt? I thought Opitz had a couple of big plays to the game. Had the hit in the second inning that gave you the lead. And then he had that kind of weird pickoff play, uh, I think, when Kevin was on the mound. Those two plays, how big did you think they were to the outcome? Well, obviously, the, the double that he hit was right after Robert hit a double. And then uh, you know, Casey, I think he got down in the count a little bit. And he went down and got him a breaking ball and stayed over it, stayed through it, and hit it hard down the left of the line for you know the only run for – pretty much the whole whole game until we finally scored in the eighth. So uh, yeah, it was a huge hit. And then the May the 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 play he made uh, with the with the pitch that was in the dirt was obviously a very good block, which Casey does all the time. And you know the runner he read the pitch out of the hand, I'm sure that it was in the dirt and he was going to try to go and Casey smothered it and then, you know, like a veteran, he didn't go out there and just throw it to one of the runners, or excuse me, throw it to one of the fielders where the runner might have an opportunity to run to the other bag. He, he made him, uh, he made him commit by going after him slowly under control. Um, you know, instead of, you know, maybe a runner at second, all of a sudden they have nobody on. And, uh, yeah, I think that might've been with, with no outs at the time. So that was maybe our first out. I don't remember exactly, but it was a huge play at the time. And then Robert Moore fell behind 0-2 before he got the big RBI hit in the eighth inning. What did you think of that at bat and the way that he battled back to get the pitch that he could hit? That was just an outstanding at bat. I mean, he got down 0-2 and then he fouled a pitch or two off, maybe took a ball, uh, took another, you know, I think the 1-2 the pitch was a slider in and he called it a ball. And, you know, they, they had a little visit. The catcher went out. They, they had a long visit out there. The umpire pretty much had to go out there and break them up and probably just trying to get everything – you know, on the on the same page, what they wanted to do, where they wanted to throw it. Um, you know, Robert fought a pitch off or two, and then he and he got the big hit up the middle. It was just a, it was just a clutch at bat and a big big part of the game. And we knew that, uh, you know, that it was going to be a fight in the ninth, and to score two more runs was was huge for us. Randy. Sorry about that, Dave. What made the uh, Georgia pitcher Sullivan so effective tonight against the uh, Arkansas batters? 
pretty much that uh, he was throwing that, you know, border, border, I would call it borderline strike ball, fastball at the top of the zone, high spin pitch. It looked like kept playing and uh, out of the hand, it looked like it was going to be down a little bit. And I don't think anybody hit it hard unless it was above, you know, when it was above the waist and, uh, and he threw strikes and I, he probably threw more strikes tonight than he, than he has uh, consistently. Uh, he had, I think he, I think might've been the fourth inning when he, when he uh, walked Gregory to lead off that inning, you know, on four pitches, I'm thinking, here we go. And uh, then I think he threw a ball to the next hitter and he's thrown five and then he might've thrown two in a row. And then he, then he got it together. Uh, I think, you know, it was, he, he did a nice job of, of flipping the switch there and finding the zone, but it's really difficult to hit that fastball that was up in the zone. He's kind of a short arm lefty uh, with a little bit different arm slot. And, and, you know, we just, we just did not track it very well, obviously. Dave, did the 1-0 score after six kind of dictate cops at that point? Yeah. I mean, we felt like we had nine outs to get. We, we had Kevin getting ready. Um, if, if, uh, Monk wouldn't have got that lefty out, we would have brought him in because the, that, the game right there, the way the game was going, it, we felt like that could be the, the ball game. And, uh, you know, if you remember the runner ended up going to third base, I think, on a, I don't know exactly what happened, but, you know, we had a 3-1 count on the lefty and Monk threw a break, really good breaking ball for a strike, and then he threw another one and he got a check swing strike three. If he wouldn't have got that hitter, we were going to bring Kevin in there and he would have you know, had to get probably obviously 10 outs. Wild pitch moving to third. Thanks, yeah. Coach. Yeah. Aiden. Hey, Coach, I was actually uh, going to ask about Monk. I know he only faced one batter, but to come into that situation, throws the wild pitch to bounce back to get that strikeout. Um, is that good for his confidence moving forward? And maybe he gets a little bit of a bigger role uh, if he's needed to call in in that tough situation in the future? Yeah, well, we, we have a lot of confidence in him. I, I feel like that you know, the Caden's confident, and uh, I'm sure that was big for him to spin two breaking balls in a row in that situation and get that big strikeout. And, you know, if, if, if it had been a little different situation, maybe a two or three run lead, we might have sent him back out. But, you know, we kind of had to go with the formula that's been winning right now. And, uh, you know, we didn't want to look back and say, why didn't we go with Kevin there um, if something, something didn't go right. But, yeah, you know, Caden, he's he's a guy that uh, we, we have no problem putting him in the middle of uh, the fire, so to speak. We've done it really the last four weekends. Andrew. Hey, Coach. Uh, last week, Wicklander threw almost 80% fastballs, and tonight it seemed like he was getting ahead with his off speed more. How, how encouraging is it to see him continue to put, to put together some good outings in different ways? Yeah, he did he, – this. I think it was the second time through, maybe he started to face these guys a third time through. Uh, he started uh, using his off speed a little bit to, to start him off with, and he was getting ahead of some guys with it. So that was big. You know, he, uh, they were swinging. Uh, he wasn't really getting the outer half with right hand hitter up the 50 50 ball is what we call it, the one that's really right on the outside corner, maybe just to touch off. He wasn't getting that pitch. And, uh, but he was getting the inside fastball to the right-hander, um, and he was been able he was able to get it there a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, he's put together some good outings now. He's given up us a chance to win, you know, really since the Mississippi State game. Every time we put him out there, he pitches well, and uh, he's confident. You can just tell by the way he acts out there. He's he's not phased. He's ready to go. Hutch. Dave, you talked about his RBI double, but Opitz also had that really nice bunt in the seventh. Was was that call or was that him? Or and what did you think about that? Yeah, we put the bunt on right there, you know, hoping that uh, he would get it down the third baseline and at a minimum we'd get a sacrifice out of it. You know, it was that, it was that kind of game, one to nothing, and uh, you know we all of a sudden we had the bases loaded, no outs, and we don't score, and you're thinking, wow, man, this is uh, this is going to be tough. You don't you don't get away with that too much in those type of games and hold on to it. And uh, that was a tremendous bunt. A little slick out there from the rain, water coming up at night. And, uh, you know, it, it ended up being a, a really, really good bunt, but uh, we didn't capitalize on it. 
And speaking of that situation, I mean, with the righty reliever, was there any thought to maybe pinch it with Smith for, for Nesbitt there in the seventh? Yeah, but it all comes down to your de defense because we had the lead. I mean, yeah, it was more than a little bit of thought on it. But it's, uh, you know, even if even if we hit a sack fly there, we got a two-run lead and I bring a pinch hitter, then we don't have, you know, our most experienced defender in there. It doesn't mean I'm going to play him every day just because of the defense. And, you know, Smith will be in there tomorrow. Uh, but, uh, you know, Jacob has, has been there in many tough situations over the last few years. So. Uh, he was the guy that we wanted in there with the lead late in the game. Brand, do you have anything else? Uh, just one more, Dave. It uh, When Kevin came on in the seventh, he kept scuffing around on the mound. Was there something wrong with the mound or maybe his cleats or the dirt? Uh, can you yeah. – he just didn't look comfortable. Yeah, the nose, both pitchers were – really, the both pitchers were doing it. I think Wick was doing it a little bit too earlier. It, it's just that uh, the dirt was kind of building up in their spikes between pitches, maybe not every pitch, but uh, I mean, it was, you know, it was really a lot of moisture in the air, a lot in the ground. I mean, you know, it, it rained right when Georgia started taking batting practice. We had just gotten off the field. It rained and hailed before we could get the tarp on. So the field, then, then you put the tarp on, it's just holding in all that water. Um, so it was, uh, you know, it was real tacky out there, really. That was, that was the issue.